And meanwhile, a no doubt of destruction, Eric Pickles, <laughs> seeks to demonize the pay of local government chief executives. Now, I know, friend, I don't suppose anybody in this room is, of high pay, either in the public or the private sector. But is it not rank hypocrisy of Pickles to demonize the public sector when not a single word comes out of the cabinet about the pay rises that were announced this week by Barclays Capital, where well, last year the average salary for an employee at Barclays Capital was 166,000, and this year it's now 236,000 pounds a year. Almost a 50% rise in salaries for those people that work at Barclays. And by the way, they're not going to share out a pool of £2.6 billion for bonuses on top. And this morning we're hearing The Guardian that for a profit of £11.6 billion, Barclays only, Barclays only paid £113 million in tax. A taxation rate of 1%. All this while the rest of the country faces an uncertain future of job losses, income stagnation, Declining services. Of course, a great capital city like London needs to remain a world leader in financial services, but they should pay the same tax as the rest of us. It also requires, as London and the rest of the country, efficient public services which are adequately funded. The cuts will do untold damage both to the social fabric of this great city, but also to the proper functioning of the London economy. But London has a mayor, and I believe he has some spies or some people in the room today taking notes, Boris, who entirely endorses the coalition's fiscal strategy. And therefore, he is unable to stand up for the needs of London, whether it's the needs of the poor, or a public sector worker struggling for housing, or the communities in our outer London who depend on efficient transport services. We have a London a Tory mayor like the Tory government, which is out of touch and out of tune with the people of this great city. And so there is an alternative to all of this, both in London and throughout the country. Is it the alternative based on equitable distribution, on understanding that our planet's resources are limited. <coughs> An alternative based on investment, on growth and on jobs, as well as the protection of the public services which we all depend upon. I believe that you can glimpse hints of a strong desire to find a new way of doing things in the protest movements such as UK Allen Cut, the March with Minnesota 26 and so on. There are signs that the Tories are not entirely confident about their project. In the last 48 hours, we saw people power force the government into a U-turn on the sale of the forests. And yesterday, they <laughs> yesterday, they appeared to reverse their policy on the call of badges. Both of which are things of return. Of course, if they can be forced to U-turn on trees and cuddly animals, but fail to U-turn on penalising students, something must be wrong. But it gives me confidence and should give this conference confidence that we can together change the course of our history. At every turn, we must be a loud voice against the unfairness of the Tory led coalition oh, cuts. I've so. got about two paragraphs. <laughs> Let's not forget the British public did not vote for the cuts. And in this conference today, you can get a sense of a new society waiting to be born. <laughs> if only we progressives have the confidence to act and speak out. Because the cuts we faced did not happen by chance or by necessity. They happened by choice. And the choice reflects Tory values. Together, we must stand up for what's right. And therefore, we should resolve to join together in making the TUC March for Alternative a turning point. I expect to see all of you, your friends, neighbours and work colleagues, on that march in a few weeks' time. Thank you very much.